maps have always been an important part of human civilization. But when and how did people get to the map, what was their purpose? What did they want to express? Finding an answer is difficult and the possibilities are as diverse as the uses of the maps themselves. During the first years of life, the human brain creates a map of the body, an inner model that gives us an idea of ourselves. The brain controls fingers, language, organs and processes the senses. A pain is shown in the model where it is located on the map of the brain. So we feel everything in our head, even if it is difficult for us to imagine it. Making maps, that is models of something, is therefore an essential requirement of nature. Not only humans, animals also need models, so the dances of the bees represent maps that lead to the flowers. Even people who live close to nature, such as the Australian Aboriginal people, have maps in their heads that they internalized through myths, dances and ceremonies. A real object is abstracted, so a river becomes a place where a gigantic snake once crept through, and the various abstractions are placed in a context. The tradition still lives today in the form of directions, which are nothing more than verbal maps. People began to depict their experiences early on. In addition to hunting scenes, objects such as mountains, huts and stars were soon added. The first traces of cartography can be found carved into mammoth ivory in the Czech Republic and Ukraine, they are supposed to represent plans of hunter camps. So it was the first site plans. An early city map, that of Seitlhoyuk, is dated to 6000 BC. The wall painting shows the place and the double peak of the Hasandeji volcano. The place stands directly in front of the volcanic mountains, although they are 127 kilometers away. This shows another feature, especially of earlier cartography, the world was not depicted in real, but idealized. The holy mountain is approaching the city, which can be represented in all the more detailed. So the map was a religious manifesto, but it also represents the origin of maps for decorative applications. About 4,500 years ago the Harites created their first map, which not only showed the city of Nutsi but also rivers and mountains. It was one of the first maps to put different elements of an area into context, that is a topological map. The Hurrian map was estimated to cover an area of 150 kilometers, with the city in the center of the map. In the town of Akrotiri, which was destroyed in the Minoan catastrophe, there is a depiction of the city dated to 1600 BC, whereby not a basic but an elevation was used here. It is one of the oldest geographical representations in the Greek cultural area, even if we cannot necessarily speak of a map here. The map of Nippur, created a hundred years later, is all the more impressive. This amazingly precise city map showed the city walls, city gates and also various temples of the city. The Euphrates was shown in its former river course, today it is far from the ruins. With this map it would certainly have been possible to find the specified places in Nippur without any problems. Amazingly, at the same time, there is also a map of the village in a rock carving of Valcamonica, Italy, which is known for its petroglyphs. Unfortunately, the map represents an unknown location and is one of the oldest cartographic representations in Western Europe. One of the most famous Egyptian maps is also the first geological map in world history. The surroundings of a gold mine east of Coptos are depicted with amazing precision on the so-called Turin Papyrus. The map was made for the expedition of Ramses IV by the scribe Aminacht. Until then, maps seemed to depict the local environment, even if knowledge of distant countries had been around for a long time. Nevertheless, the concept of a world map only slowly began to take hold. Around 1000 BC the Chinese invented another category of map, the representation of fictional worlds in the form of maps. The old map shows an island that apparently resembles China. The island is surrounded by a ring of water full of islands, so there is another ring of land and ring of water on the very outside. The region that comes closest to the Chu dynasty also appears here in the center of the world. 
the view of the world devised by Homer is to be set at about the same time, even if Homer himself lived 200 years later, while the content of Elias and the Odyssey around 1200 BC took place. The world is an interesting mixture of facts and mythology, but maps have only been made in modern times due to tradition. Typically, Greece is the center of the world disk, the Black Sea is just a bay of the all-flowing world ocean. Mystical peoples like Lotophages, Lestragonians and Amazons populate the land. Basically, it can be read here that there were two basic views about the structure of the Earth. The first hypothesis was based on the assumption that everything on the mainland is ultimately an island in a world ocean that surrounds it. Most of the models were based on the limited size of the world, which means that the ocean found a limit somewhere. So did it end in an endless waterfall, which again fed the heavenly primordial sea and thus came back as rain. An alternative view assumes that every ocean is ultimately an inland sea, comparable to the Mediterranean. Such world models have an edge of land, mostly it is described as an insurmountable mountain range. What lies behind this is an unspecified question. Both types of models had some things in common. The earth was a circular, flat disk, with the country of the respective cartographer representing the center of the world. In most models, the earth was also surrounded by a dome on which the sun, moon, planets and stars moved. Outside this dome one suspected the legendary primeval ocean. The Babylonians created around 600 BC. The first world map that has survived to this day. And as was customary for the time, the center of this map was logically in Babylon. The central axis is the Euphrates, which means that the map is inclined to the north-south axis. Countries, mountains, swamps and cities are arranged radially, surrounded by a world ocean. Outside the great ocean, however, were the distant countries such as India, Egypt, and Dilmun. The map is more geographically precise and its message is certainly to be understood more politically. The emerging new Babylonian empire demonstrated its awareness of power. The following Greek maps have been handed down not materially, but in the form of descriptions. One of the oldest Greek world maps is that of Anaximander, which dates from around 546 BC originated. The contours of the European Mediterranean coast, that is the area of Greek culture, can be seen relatively clearly here. Asia and Libya, on the other hand, are very rudimentary, and the border with Asia is the Phasis River in the Caucasus, which extends to the world ocean, while the Nile separates Asia and Libya, but also represents a waterway to the world ocean. How to explain this in view of the gradients and cataracts seems difficult. The worldview was in a way more philosophical than physical. At the same time, Pythagoras and his colleagues were already thinking about the spherical shape of the earth. But for centuries this remained one theory alongside many others, and the extent to which this view received attention outside the philosophical circle is questionable. The map of the world from 500 BC attributed to Hecatus. Although it still basically represents a world surrounded by the primordial ocean, the rivers are now really rivers and instead of the Nile, the Red Sea separates Libya from Asia. However, here too the Nile still rises from the primordial ocean. The map is also expanded to include several rivers, including the Danube, Euphrates, Dnieper, Don, Tigris, and Indus. The distant Caspian Sea is now a bay of the world's ocean. The Mediterranean coast of Spain has now also been recorded more precisely. Herodotus steers towards a large number of details 50 years later in his histories. He never drew a map of the world himself, but his descriptions shaped the work of later cartographers. However, his thoughts are so well described that they can easily be represented in cartographic form. In his histories he describes the known world to its edges, with more and more mythology being incorporated here. It is noteworthy that Europe is represented here dominantly in relation to Asia and Libya, which were more or less of equal value in earlier cartographers. However, areas of Europe are also added here, 
which we now count as Asia. The Caspian Sea is now an inland sea. A curiosity is the course of the Nile through the Sahara to originate in the Atlas Mountains. What followed, at least in Greece, was a time of upheaval. The Peloponnesian War shook the Greek world, on the other hand the Greek influence in Egypt increased. Eventually the conqueror Alexander led the Greeks to the edges of the known world, only that they never found one thing, the end of the world. In the period of Hellenism that followed, scientific research flourished. One of the scholars who did important work for the world view at this time was Eratosthenes. This was around 245 BC. Called by Ptolemy III to Alexandria, which at that time was the center of the educated world. And here Eratosthenes also succeeded in one of his most important achievements, the calculation of the circumference of the earth. To this end, he compared the angle of the shadow cast in Alexandria with that in a swan. This is 5000 stadiums to the south on the northern tropic, and there the sun cast no shadow in the fountain at midday on the summer solstice. The tower in Alexandria, on the other hand, cast a shadow on the same day that corresponds to an angle of 7.2 degrees. So this was the angle between a swan and Alexandria, at exactly 1 50th the circumference of the earth. So he came to a value of around 39,000 to 40,000 kilometers for the circumference of the earth, which is astonishingly precise. It is not surprising that this Eratosthenes was also the creator of a world map. Unfortunately this has only been preserved as a description, but it shows some progress. The Nile no longer made a spend through the Sahara, but came from the depths of Africa. The western margins have been extended to include the British Isles. In the east, India was no longer a foreign country, and although India comes out pretty twisted, the Ganges and the island of Sri Lanka, which the Greeks called Taproban at the time, are known. The limits of knowledge are to be found in the north, and the Caspian Sea has again been reduced to a bay of the world's ocean. In the north, some mythology is also added with the island of Thule. After all, it was in 160 BC. The scholar Kreitz von Mallows, who devised the first globe of the world from the two works of Eratosthenes, the continents drawn by Eratosthenes are only a quarter of the world. Crates assumes a deeper symmetry and assumes that there are four corresponding land masses. He called the well-known Ecumene. He imagined the continent Periacumene to be located west of the Atlantic. The southern boundary of both northern continents was a sea, but this zone is said to be so hot that it cannot be crossed by humans. Nevertheless, he was concerned about the distant world in the south. On the one hand he recognized that in the southern hemisphere the seasons must be shifted by half a year. South of the Ecumene he placed the Antiochumene, while south of the Periacumente he settled the Antichthonic or Antipodal continent. So Crate's world was like an orange that had been quartered. Four island continents in a sea that flows around everything, but all part of a sphere. It is also noteworthy that the approach of a globe was only taken up again in 1492 in the form of Behem Zerdipfel. Around 100 BC, Posidonius took another approach to measure the circumference of the Earth. He used the position of the star Canopus in Rhodes, where it did not rise, and in Alexandria, where, according to his measurements, it was 7.5 degrees above the horizon. Assuming that Rhodes is 5,000 stadia away from Alexandria, he determined an astonishingly precise Earth circumference of 39,000 kilometers. But later Strabo recognized a massive error in Posidonius' calculation, namely that the distance from Rhodes and Alexandria is not 5,000, but only 3,750 stadia. The corrected circumference of the Earth was now 29,000 kilometers. This value has now been passed on over the centuries and caused Columbus error to have reached India. But this does not mean that all scholars accepted this circumference of the earth, the circumference of Eratosthenes existed as a competing model. Today we know that it was probably a question of measurement inaccuracies. Like Eratosthenes, 
Posidonius was a cartographer. However, the reconstructed maps also contain some anachronisms, for example the Chinese are mentioned as steers, a practice that has only been ascribed to Marinus von Tyros, who was active 200 years later. The Caspian Sea is still a bay of the Northern Ocean, also around 30 BC. The resulting map by Strabo is largely based on that of Eratosthenes. The same applies to a large extent to the world map created 70 years later by Pomponius Mela. At the turn of the ages, a cartographic innovation came from Han China. This is less about the map itself, which is unfortunately only very fragmentary, than about the material from which it was made because the Chinese invented a material that will have a decisive influence on the art of writing and cartography, paper. Previously, one of the preferred materials for maps was silk. Unfortunately, these old silk maps have not survived, but there are records of a number of cartographic works. A city map has survived from the Han period, with houses, shops and gates, so a very common map. The work of the great cartographer Claudius Ptolemy will shape the next centuries. In his case, too, only replicas exist, but these were already in circulation in the Middle Ages. The origin of its original is likely to date back to 150 AD. To be dated. He introduced the degrees of longitude and latitude. The lines of longitude have since been shifted, but the lines of latitude have remained to this day. In addition to these innovations, the map also contains some new geographical information, such as the Malaysian Peninsula, and he located the source of the Nile in the Moon Mountains in the heart of Africa. The Caspian Sea was finally an inland sea. India seems pretty flattened. With regard to the circumference of the Earth, he referred to Posidonius, with which he is not insignificantly guilty of the error of Christopher Columbus. He also left astronomy his geocentric system that blocked progress for centuries. He also laid another Easter egg, namely Terra Australis Incognita. There was no logical reason for this, but Ptolemy assumed that all of the world's oceans are in fact inland seas. The strange southern continent remained and was sought, later connected with the belief that the southern continent was the to balance the weight of the earth. Myths about rich civilizations and a land where milk and honey flow were making the rounds. In the end, all that remained of the dream was icy Antarctica. But that's another story. <laughs>